Hey, what's up everyone? Thank you for joining me here for another YouTube video here on Retro Geek Gaming where we're going to talk about things that are retro, geek, and gaming related. And I want to go ahead and start off this video first thing by apologizing for no videos last week. was kind of in a weird place and just kind of working through stuff with my health. With my health. And um, yeah, I was just at a place where I didn't feel like there was anything that was really newsworthy to talk about. Uh, but we may go over that stuff in the Retro Rewind at the end of the week. And um, also just the fact that, you know, again, I just kind of have been hurting, haven't really felt like doing videos, but I'm better now and hopefully we'll be back to my recording schedule. So thank you for joining me. If this is your first time watching, you're, you're free to, to subscribe if you want, because uh, I try to do video content like this um, at least once a week, unless, of course, something happens. Um, and of course, you can give this thumbs up if you like this kind of content. So, yeah. But otherwise, there's no pressure for me. You know how I am. I just do this stuff just to do it. So let's go ahead and get into today's topic. Which is, as you can see here, we're talking about um, Nintendo and their censorship. And uh, this is from DualShockers.com, as you can see. And it says, Bayonetta Creator says, Nintendo never asked them to censor the series, and in fact, they actually wanted to have these be more revealing. Uh, and this is kind of the Nintendo that I know of from recent um, days. I know that in the past, they used to be um, a lot worse with their censorship, but there was a reason for that. It's because of how the video game market was, and of course, they had the only sort of, you know, stake in the market with the with the Nintendo seal of approval and all that. But, um... Yeah, that's neither here nor there, that's in the past. But we saw with the announcement of Bayonetta 3 that they basically had a no nudity mode that's called Naive Angel. And people thought that this was Nintendo. That Nintendo wanted to censor it, which doesn't make any sense because Bayonetta 1 was pretty much untouched and Bayonetta 2 had a lot of the same stuff as well. And we're going to get into that in a moment. But in the recent tweet here which has been translated and we're going to read it down here it says a lot of people bring up Nintendo were discussing the nudity in Bayonetta but during our time with the Bayonetta 1 port Bayonetta 2 and Bayonetta 3 the only suggestion that they received was regarding the Link costume in Bayonetta 1 and 2 and how it should have been a little bit more revealing and he continued that there was no bias that influenced that aspect of the game he thinks that players can still enjoy the game without worrying that it may have been uh, after working with them for such a long time. And they get the impression that although there were times where they made butt heads, they were surprisingly open to direct discussions around development and sales. And of course, this is probably poorly translated. But he's basically just saying that he thought that, in fact, Nintendo was actually very surprisingly open to direct discussions about it. And also that Nintendo should be a little more revealing in it. Which is very interesting because that's sort of how I view Nintendo. You know, a lot of people say, oh, Nintendo censors this, and Nintendo censors that. I've seen Sony censor stuff also. Um, and people are going to censor whatever they're going to censor. You know, like, we have, for an example, um, uh, like, uh, TV shows, anime, and stuff like that, that they are censored more heavily here in the states than they are overseas in Japan you know um, just because their whole I guess uh, view on nudity and certain aspects like that are nearly as as uh, big of a deal as they are here in the states so a lot of times we get stuff that's heavily censored um, and I can understand why people would think that about Nintendo because, again, in the past they have censored a lot. Uh, they also do have that family friendly image, but that's kind of silly because Sony also has a family friendly image. You know, Microsoft, in their own way, yeah, they have more mature games like, you know, Halo and uh, Gears of War and stuff like that. They do have more, you know, family friendly games, but we've also gotten. You know, Banjo Kazooie on Game Pass. You know, we have more friendly games. You know, if you go to PlayStation Plus, I think they have um, the Spiral games. So it's like there's more family friendly stuff 
on there also. So, in fact, I think the Nintendo has become even more open because, like I said, there's been games like Mad World that have uh, been rated M, and we've seen a lot more M-rated games pretty much since around the Wii, I believe. You know, and even with games like Majora's Mask back on the N64, it had a lot of darker, more adult themes, but it was just how it looked. It's how it looked on the 64 that I think really kind of gives that image off. But, going back to what I was sort of uh, reminded of when reading the article, Bayonetta 1 and 2 showed nudity. I mean, it wasn't, you know, full-blown nudity. It was like side boob, you know, stuff like that. But, those games were on the Wii U, and they were ported over to the Switch. So the fact that Nintendo would have any say or even care about that, uh, to me, is silly. I think it's really more for people who stream the game, or maybe for like YouTube content. Because if you think about it, if Nintendo, I mean, Nintendo probably wouldn't strike themselves. I, I don't think that they would. But how quickly do you think that if Nintendo were to show gameplay footage of the game and, you know, it's just like hit the, the hairs going everywhere, then like, you know, side boob pops up or whatever. How quickly that could get the monetized on YouTube or something. And same thing for a streamer. How quickly would that stream get shut down if the game was like on Twitch or whatever and, oh, we got little kids watching, but here's some nudity. Even though there's really no, you know, pornographic stuff, nothing, you know, that adult going on. It's still showing something that might be considered inappropriate by a company like YouTube or Twitch. So that's why I think it's it's there. It's for those people because it's an M rated game, I, I I don't think that you're gonna be going in to an M rated game and like being that surprised, especially since this is the third game in the series I and mean, it's happened in Bayonetta One and Bayonetta Two. I, if you're surprised at that point that Nintendo that, that like, you know, Bayonetta's butt crack uh, is shown or something like that. Uh, you're in the wrong place, <laughs> you know. Um, and like I said, I, I've just, I've just seen Nintendo be more adult themed. Like Xenoblade Chronicles Two cussed. There's cussing in Xenoblade Chronicles Three. You know, there's all kinds of just stuff. And like I said, even Zelda in the past has dwelled into some pretty dark stuff. But it's just how the style of it looks. So it's interesting to me, and I don't know why. Why Nintendo still has this kid-friendly, you know, family-friendly, it's, it's for kids only sort of um, aspect or view from people. Maybe just because that's how it's been set for years. You know, it's like, oh, look, here's the Wii. It's something designed for kids or for grandmas, you know, like, maybe that's what it is. I don't know. But it's interesting to me that Nintendo actually wanted things to be more revealing kind of shows you how Nintendo is. I always kind of viewed them as being the kind of company that worked with their partners. For example, I've used this example many times, they basically own Retro. I think they have like a 51% uh, stake in Retro, it might be more than that. To where basically they can just say, look, we want you to make this game. You know, here is, you know, Wind Waker, we want you to make it in HD for the Switch, for example. You know, they, they could just go to them, point to them, and just say, make this game. Instead, they sit down and they're like, what do you want to do? And they're like, well, we want, we still have the same engine, we still have a lot of ideas, we want to make another, another Donkey Kong Country game. Okay, cool. And then they made Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. So, that's how I think it is. I think that they really just sort of work with their partners instead of just buy them out. You know, because Nintendo could. Nintendo could buy out a lot of companies, but instead they just work with them and just like, hey, you know, what would you, Capcom, do with The Legend of Zelda? Oh, well, here's Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons, and here's Minish Cap. Okay, cool. So, that's how I think it is with Nintendo. I'm not saying that they're not perfect. I'm, I'm not saying that they're perfect in this, because obviously they get a lot of things wrong. They still censor some stuff, and, you know, they still have, you know, an image that they have. So they do do stuff wrong. I'm just saying that there are other companies that censor also. There's, um... TV shows that are censored, movies that are censored, you know, I mean, if you ever go on, like, Fox, you know, back in the day, and watch a movie, and you hear, like, Mother Flipper, 
instead of what's supposed to be said. You understand that movies get censored on TV. So, it is what it is. But I'm looking forward to Bayonetta 3, personally. Um, I'm looking forward to Xenoblade Chronicles 3. I'm looking forward to Nintendo for the rest of the year and the offerings that they have. But also um, other stuff from Microsoft and Sony as well. So I'm not throwing any hate or shade towards anybody. But if you did like this content, feel free to subscribe. You know, other than last week, which was a rough week for me, I try to upload content at least once a week. And um, hopefully I'm going to start getting better videos. I know this one was kind of a, kind of a weak sauce video, but hopefully um, we'll get some better stuff. Plus we have the Retro Rewind that should be coming up on Friday. Um, if I can lock in everything, I do need to double check and make sure that you know, the schedules are open. Uh, and that we're ready to go for the Retro Rewind, and if not, I'll probably just do it myself. Uh, or just give you a video or a skip it, I, I don't know yet. But, I hope you guys have a good one. Like and subscribe if you want, no pressure from me, of course. And I'll see you next time, guys. I'm going to go, I guess, take a nap. Later.